Downing Street has confirmed that two Royal Navy auxiliary ships and three helicopters will be sent to prevent all-out war in the region. RFA Argus and RFA Lime Bay, carrying a company of Royal Marines and three Merlin helicopters will be deployed in the eastern Mediterranean. The task force won't get involved in any armed conflict, with senior sources saying it will try to tackle a humanitarian crisis and track the movement of weapons to Hamas. It's really interesting, that line they're drawing very clearly, Owen, oh, there, that this is about the humanitarian crisis, which suggests it could be there to help people from either side, re regardless of, you know, who they represent, given, you know, that they could be in crisis. Well, what do you make Well, the British this? government's helping the humanitarian crisis in the first place happen because it's supporting what is a war crime. And that's what we should be talking about, is a war crime being committed with the support of the British government. This military... Um, contribution, by the way, is completely tokenistic. Uh, if anyone thinks it's going to do anything worthwhile, it won't. Um, and I don't understand the framing of prevent all-out war in the region. It won't do any such thing, clearly. Um, what it does show is that the British government will stand behind the Israeli state whilst it commits a war crime. Now, what's happening at the moment is collective punishment, which is illegal under international law. We were all horrified by the atrocities committed by Hamas against innocent civilians um, in Israel. What is now happening is illegal under the Geneva Convention. You cannot cut off. Okay, let's let's just go back to these ships, though, because well, what we have there is a hospital there's, ship. There's not, and there's, certainly right, from okay, the way that I. But the reason the reason I'm frustrated about talking but, about that is we witnessed yeah. the, the military. Uh, there's nothing. Medics, there's, they 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 didn't regard which not, side people came from. They treated them, and if we are about to see a humanitarian crisis on you this know, is increased too, scale, then that ship could be there to help out, Owen. This is too tokenistic a contribution to be worth commenting on. All it shows, the only significance of this, is that it shows the British government will unequivocally, unconditionally back Israel while it cuts off water, food and electricity, while it drops white phosphorus. People should Google, people should Google white phosphorus. What it does, it's like raining fire on civilians. It sticks to your skin and burns it off. It's a war crime to use that against the civilian population. The British government's position is, that it will support collective punishment against a population which is the, si the, the size of Gaza of East London. It has 2.2 million people. 80% of them rely on international humanitarian assistance. 50% of them are children. 50% of children. They are hungry, desperate kids. They did not kill those people, those, those poor, innocent people in Israel. And the position of Britain is that the hundreds of Palestinian kids who have already died more will be killed, as well as medics who are dying, as well as UN officials, journalists, the whole world. I think we, and need, I, Larry, I would I think say, we do I would say, need some La balance La here. Larry. We gen well, genuinely need a bit of balance here. Well, I was talking to a Jewish friend this morning who said, who lives in London and said that um, her daughter, who's Jewish, is in Paris, um, is not going out because she's so fearful. Um, you've got the WhatsApp groups in the Jewish community saying to people, you don't go out because they're really worried about um, anti-Semitic attacks in the UK, all over the world. So there's a, there's an, you know, if you were Jewish, I think you would feel different. I think you'd feel very afraid. I think the the shock and the the as you already said, the horrific nature of the attacks that happened to um, completely innocent Jew and calling call civilians is, is is a kind of very it's a euphemism. These were families. These were mothers and fathers and children. And the way they were killed and the fact that it was absolutely unashamedly. We weren't even trying to get a military target. We were just going to kill people in a terrible, terrible way. So I understand... I, I want to... I, just, I really have to... I don't okay, think no, that, I really want to focus but, on our subject, yes, which, is and about, I think which is about completely the purpose of these right. ships. I, now, the I two agree ships, it's just so we're clear, okay. But just so we're clear, what they're aiming to do is patrol to prevent but, arms making their way to Hamas. Can I answer why Gaza. I just think I'm frustrated about and it? Also, of, why my, my response is somehow not uh, acceptable? Because I'm saying that the significance of what Britain is doing is through this tokenistic gesture... It's showing that it supports what Israel is doing. And just on the, no, no, I have to respond very quickly to that. You're absolutely right. Anti-Semitic incidents always go up during these flares yeah. of violence. That's yeah. always true. And every attempt to blame Jewish people for what is happening, committed by Israel, is anti-Semitism. What is also happening, it always happens at the same time, is you get an increase in anti-Muslim hate crimes. And they are being spiking in Britain and elsewhere as well. 
But the point I'll just make very politely to you is, you talked about the fear people have, Jewish people here mm. and in France and elsewhere. The fear of people in Palestine now is based on the fact they are being bombed. They are having white yes, phosphorus drops on them. Yes. And the reason I'm frustrated and is what caused Palis this? Palestinian Hamas no, caused those this Palestinian problem. children didn't do that. No, no, of course. And they're they paying. Didn't. And Palestinian children are of equal worth their lives I think that, for that of an Israeli child. But I think and also, people aren't saying that in the media. But I, but Palestinian but I people are being treated as less yes. than human. Again, this that support has to change. This, this support that's that's being offered, that's that's on its way. What there. do you want us to say about this? I'm genuinely curious. I don't understand what the point is. I'm just saying if you look at the purpose of these two ships, what they're there to do. One is to prevent arms making their way to Hamas. That's a good thing. They're surely. not going to do that. That's a token. And the other, effort. the other is to provide hospital assistance. Now, presumably, that's for whoever needs it, regardless of which side they. Well, that is aiding in what could be a catastrophic humanitarian crisis. Which, which Britain well, could stop. Britain could stop by taking a stand against collective think, punishment, I, which is killing Britain innocent people. I cannot stop that. I mean, my we fear, right. my fear look, when I heard that we were sending this okay. task force was, oh my goodness, we're not getting involved in another war, are we? You know, surely we have learned that when we step into the Middle East, no good thing ever happens that. And I think we've already got Ukraine that we're involved in and now we're going to be involved in this. It's just like, we. I feel like as a country, we've got so many problems here and yet, yet again, we're getting, whether it's tokenistic, which I think it largely is, here we are getting involved. You just made okay. a great point. Uh, Lowry just made an excellent point there, which is every single one of these military interventions has been a disaster. Yeah. You're right. Iraq, yeah. Afghanistan, Libya, we could go on. But that's also true with, the, with Gaza. Every single Israeli onslaught on Gaza killed huge numbers of innocent civilians and it did not stop Hamas and you also had Israeli soldiers dying, not anywhere in, in, compared to the number of Palestinians. And again, in the last 15 years before this hideous atrocity which Hamas committed, 96% of the deaths were Palestinian. 96% of the injuries oh. were Palestinian. And we've got to start treating Palestinians as human beings. Because oh. in this discussion in the media at the moment, people are not treating Palestinians as human beings and that okay. has to stop. Really it's racism some, and it has to be called... I really, want to, I really want to take some calls. Maureen, it, this uh, task force, so-called, we're talking about two, two ships, three helicopters. Should we be sending that to the East Mediterranean... To, to help Ernie, is the good idea. Morning. Good morning to everyone. Good morning, morning. My question is, why on earth are we having all this trouble in the world? After all, we are all the same under the colours of our skin. It does not matter what colour, creed or colour we are. We I, are all to get on in the world. If I, people have a problem with themselves, why don't the two men in each country go and fight their problems man to man instead of sending all the troops and people to kill each other where people are losing their sons, daughters, babies, animals. It should be we're here to give love. We're not here to fight each other for items of the world. Uh, Maureen, when we pass the... away into the next world, we cannot take the things with us. I don't think you'll find much disagreement with most of what you're saying there, Maureen, specifically. No, what? I, I think that's not true. I think Maureen has just made one of the best contributions I've heard in this discussion I, because Maureen just affirmed the equal humanity of Palestinians. And everyone needs to be just actually honest about this. Politicians and journalists, the way they are behaving... They don't think Palestinian children have equal worth. To, okay. Yes, they do, because they're tolerating the mass murder of Israeli children. I don't think the Hamas people who went in and cut the throats of children regarded them as of equal value. I want We're not arming Hamas. Maureen, I want We're not backing Hamas. I want to ask Maureen specifically about the help that the UK is sending. Do you think it should be going or not? No. I think, people, I think the people who run the countries that are causing all this problem should be man-to-man, -man, get their fists out and fight like men, not send out other people to do the fighting for them. OK, more, thank you so much, Maureen. We're going to take another call. Beverly, do you think the UK should be sending ships to the East Mediterranean to, to help what could be a terrible humanitarian crisis? Yes, I do. And the reason being is I was in the Six Day War. And I know what these, the, the Hamas and all the others are like. They're cowards. They never stand up and show their faces. They are in Gaza, tunneling under ordinary people's homes and, and creating absolute mayhem. Gaza needs to be flattened. 
And the, the, OK, but the these... Israelis, the Israeli, now, please let me finish. The Israelis have asked them to move out of their homes so they can do that, so they can stop the tunnelling. Beverly, Beverly, listen to yourself. You're talking about human beings there. You're casually talling for an entire community, an entire a nation there to be flattened, which can only be done by killing vast numbers of people. What you just called there for, supported, is there was a term for it, it's called ethnic cleansing. When you force an entire people out under the threat of violence, that's ethnic cleansing. That's what Slobodan Milosevic did. That's what happened to the Balkans. The idea of what, that you think that all these people, all these injured uh, patients in hospitals, all these all newborn babies, you just think they're gonna flee somehow in a war zone, Obviously, that what you're calling for in practice will mean tens of thousands of people who are dead. And that means children, given 50% are kids. They and they are kids just like the people who play football down your road, Beverly. Let's let They're human answer. beings. They have, they have been... They have, the Israelis are giving the Palestinians the, the chance to move out. What do you mean, ethnic cleansing? The, you can't the, force a population out. No. But please let me finish before you start mouthing off with something you know nothing uh, about. Uh, Beverly, I know more than enough about uh, this. And what you're calling oh, for wait, is I'm the same thing. Let, <laughs> let me tell you let me tell you something. I am Jewish and I know what's going on. I've been there, you haven't. And if you think this just happens in Israel and surrounding areas, Think again, it happens in Sheffield, which is one of the worst places in this country to live if you're a Jew, and it happens in London. So put the rubbish that you're coming out with and nice, nice enough with all with Jeremy Corbyn and stuff. It uh, doesn't work. I think, okay. hang on a second. I think what... Sorry, but, 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 it's just people casually calling for violence on, on, on national television. It's astonishing. I think, I think Beverly speaks for an awful lot of people who are Jewish, who, and I'm not Jewish, and therefore I can, can't quite understand what it feels like. The, my, my friend said to me this morning, what this, Israel was created to keep us safe. And for Jewish people, that's what a lot of them feel. It was, and then so for them not to be safe within what they feel is the only safe place they have on earth, that's why this cuts so deep for them. And I agree. I don't think they should be levelling Gaza. I don't think they should be preventing water and, and power and food to get into Gaza. But I understand why this has no, happened. But, but, OK, I, th I want to take so another I call. Better. Thank but, you, Larry. Uh, yeah, Chris, just... Chris, do you think these ships should be going to the East Mediterranean? Sorry, is this me, Chris? Yes, hello, Chris. No, sorry. Um, uh, no, um, the, the, the problem with, with this and with many things that we have, like Owen said, we've interfered with in the past, it's perception and trust. Now, for me, I don't, you know, this. you could probably put a tagline to this, we come in peace, our Navy. But I don't think people are going to believe that around the world, and that's the problem. And I think people will think we are interfering yet again. We've had the disaster, as Owen said, about Iraq and Afghanistan and everywhere else. And, and I just think, I mean, where are the United Nations in this map? Where are, what, what are they there for? Is this, Peacekeeping, we're told. Is this but a good they, point, Lowry? What Chris is saying here is we put ourselves in this position before we know we're a target. Is that the risk that, that's there with putting these boats in a, in a war zone where oh, things could escalate? Well, I mean, I think we, we agree that it's tokenistic and it's sending a message and that message will be read by different countries in different ways. And that's what the concern is. Does the world then divide down and you have people supporting Israel and people supporting Hamas or Hezbollah or that, you know, that whole axis. And we're caught, it's, it's a complicated situation. What everybody in the outside says, why can't they just sit down and agree a two-state solution? That's what most people would say. That, I remember they used to say that about, you know, in North, I grew up in when Northern Ireland was um, right on the edge of the UK and they were bombing pubs in Birmingham and people, innocent civilians, were dying. We managed in the end, although it's been a bit shaky at times, to create peace there. It's a less complicated situation, but we thought that would never end, didn't we? There is always hope that this will end. And one would hope that this situation, being so terrible, would bring people to the table. But now there's even another layer of hurt on both sides. It does feel like we're a long way from a two-state solution right now, doesn't but, it? But, it's so well, difficult yeah, to see. I want to take another crisis. call, guys. Um, Jamie, uh, do you feel these boats should be going or not? Um, 
in a way, yes. I mean, I, I will say I totally agree with everything that Owen, everyone said so far. I normally disagree with people, actually, but I t- totally agree. But what a lot of people, I think, don't realise is they're talking about, you know, like Jewish people and stuff like that. But what a lot of people don't realise is what about, <laughs> not to put, it, uh, to put it on the other foot, on the other foot, what about all, you know, there's probably... There's probably Jewish people over there, Christians, all of this, but it just seems to be, it, yes, to get people, send the boats over, get people out. That's what I think they should be using them for. Get the people, get all the, any, all the British people out, all the children and women and stuff like that. Get everyone out on those, those two ships and three helicopters. I mean, I agree, I agree with everything what, what Owen has said, actually, I agree. I mean, <laughs> I, the, know, pro- the problem is, Jamie, we're talking about one were two auxiliary ships, one of which is a hospital ship. We're talking about millions of people who are going to be uh, are going to be leaving their homes and trying to find somewhere to be. So, well, I hope millions of people aren't. Look, the, the history of Palestine since 1948, when you had the Nakba, the catastrophe in which Palestinians were driven from their home, is when Palestinians leave their home, when they're forced from their homes, they never go back. And that, that's why we have now the longest occupation in modern times. Gaza is under international siege. Um, sorry, under siege. It has been for 15 years. It's under blockade. It's a tiny, tiny strip of land. It's hugely densely populated. If believe- they are forced to leave, it's ethnic cleansing. That's but, all it is. But do you believe that uh, the Jews have a right to live in Israel and, under course. their own state? There is only a lasting peace when Jews and Arabs alike have peace and security. So you're not suggesting the, the ethnic cleansing of Jews oh, from of Palestine? Not. Of course not. When are some people not. on the left do believe that? No, they that. don't believe that. I don't think the vast majority no, of anyone thinks majority. that. It's absolutely critical that we have Jews and Arabs with peace and security living together. Nobody rational should oppose that. But at the moment, the people who are dying in vast, vast numbers are the Palestinians who've been deprived of their right for national statehood. People talk about Hamas threatening Israel in practical terms, because we saw the horrible atrocity. No one's belittling the horror of what Hamas did. But in practical terms, only Israel has the capacity to destroy the other. Oh, and they are going to flatten Gaza. And people are saying on national TV okay. they should. Uh, Lowry, uh, we're going to have to move on there. Thank you, Jamie, for your call. Thanks to all of our calls.